So hello everyone, uh, welcome to the second day of DEF CON Czech 2022. And it's my pleasure to announce the next meetup, uh, or actually first meetup of today, being innovation in complex projects empowered by communities. If you have any questions, utilize the Q&A tab or basically enter the meetup by clicking share audio and video. I will uh, kick you in the room as well. And I hand it over to Natal. Hey, good morning, everyone. How are you today? Uh, I'm very excited to be here uh, to talk about how in this meetup room, um, uh, today we're going to talk how um, innovation in complex uh, uh, project empowered is empowered by the communities. Is, this is a very good example on how a community uh, could build uh, around uh, an open source project and then develop. And uh, you will uh, hear from, from the people if we, in, from this community, uh, how cool is to start a community, join a community and contribute actively to this community. So I'm really excited to be here at DevCon uh, 2022. Uh, looking forward to be there again in 2023 on site. But for this year, let's have this uh, um, meetup virtual uh, because we have lots of very, uh, lots of cool stuff to talk about. So if we go next into the slide, we can kick off this uh, conversation. Uh, we have uh, um, an agenda for today, so we, uh, we would like to introduce you who are the speaker of today. You see uh, uh, some, some, some folks here uh, in, in, in this window, and then we go into the technical details about uh, the, an architectural overview on how this uh, project is built. We're going to share more info. Um, Yesterday, we had a session with uh, Andrea, uh, Ben, and Mattia talking about also how to build cross-platform uh, uh, build uh, for, for the edge. So we're going to uh, talk about how to run those workloads in the edge. And then we're going to do another walkthrough into um, technology in a walkthrough on how containers work in this environment, how we can build a secure environment and then finally connect the world to open source. We have some appointment also for the community we'd like to share. So if we go to the next slide, please, we can, uh, we can, we can start. Now we, we, we would like to introduce you the, te the team. So uh, please come in the chat and say hi to the team. Let's go to the first one. Uh, you see here, this is the, um, those are the Quarkus for IoT community, let's say leaders. Uh, those, are, those are people that uh, are actively contributing in the community. Everyone is really welcome to join this community. We're going to share also in the chat the link uh, soon on how to join the community. So if you see those folks here, you see some, some, of, some of those today's uh, presenting. Uh, but uh, with Andrea, uh, Andreas, Mattia, Mario, Marcus, uh, uh, Jeff, Ben, uh, and I would like you to present them today. So if you go into the next slide, Andrea, I'm ending over to you. How are uh, you? Thanks, thanks, Natale. And hi, everyone. I hope you are still enjoying the DevConf. It's remote, and we, we again, are looking forward to be with you next year on site. But so, yeah, uh, you've probably heard about me yesterday, Andrea Battaglia from Italy. Uh, I live in far south, uh, thanks to, thank to the, the, the pandemic lockdown. So I'm still enjoying the, the warm and shiny and sunny land uh, in, in southern Italy. Um, I'm here today with my, my peers here to, to, to tell you how we can work together on your project, on some innovation. Um, as, as the technology or the community lead. Um, and also, I will introduce the, some, some uh, key architectural points and will explain you why all, all these people are here to, to ready to have an open conversation. Please feel free to stop us anytime, to share your voice, to ask questions. We will make sure this will be an interactive, interactive session. So we are not here just to present what we have done and what we are about to do. Thanks as so. you can see, uh, as you can see from the picture, Andre is an experienced traveler and uh, joining conferences, open source conferences. So you you will see him for sure in next uh, next DevCon on site. So yeah, let's go into the other team members. Hey Ben, how are you? Hey, good himself. <clears throat> good, good. So yeah, I'm Ben Saliad. Uh, my day job, I'm a solution architect at Red Hat. Um, but as part of the community, I've been focusing a lot on, on some of the container technologies, how we actually bring that closer to our IoT and, and edge devices. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm based in the Netherlands. 
Cool, cool, Ben. Uh, yesterday, Ben also did a great demo. I'm, I really like, recommend you to uh, see again re the recording that will be uh, available soon about the presentation. Uh, and let's go next uh, to the next team member. Hey, Mattia. Hi, Natale. Hi, Mattia. Mattia, principal center of that. Um, based on Harps region, which is Switzerland, Austria. A kind of specialist in a lot of stuff. But yeah, I like to dig around cool stuff. That's why I joined this community, because always working on the edge, on the cutting edge technology. Um, I like doing sport, racing tree and paleo training, you see in the picture, trying to escape from customer meetings and do fancy stuff. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Mattia. Ah, yeah, this sport lo looks really kind of uh, adventurous. Uh, so that meta I like it, the analogy you made that you <laughs> try to escape for. <laughs> so, Natale, sorry, as, as this is a meetup, I would like to ask a question to the audience here. Do you really yes. think that's Mattia? Because that doesn't really look Mattia. Probably that's a picture from the internet. Huh? Down that's down. me. Yeah. Come on. What? Look, look <laughs> my arm. Look my arm. Look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just rotated the image. He was not doing this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, what if uh, we have twenty people connected? I would like to give uh, a big shout out to the, all the people attending you today. I know it's Saturday and virtual, so uh, but it's really. Um, I, I promise you, this is really cool uh, topic, and we will see how in in a few seconds. Let's finish presenting the team. Let's go to the next step. Hey, Andreas, how are you? Hi there, I'm Andreas. I also work for Red Hat. I'm in the far down south of Germany. As you can see, if you go south in Germany and you can't get any further, that's probably where you meet me somewhere. Um, I'm the only ops guy in this team in the shark tank of developers uh, speaking wow. Java code. I don't speak Java code at all. I'm taking care of the um, you know, rollout, pixie booting, um, and and uh, the, the edge device setup and uh, OS3 image and, and that kind of stuff. And, that's what I do in the project. Fantastic. And I like this picture, Andreas. Uh, this is where you live, basically. No, it's fantastic. Uh, really, that really has been awesome. taken over there somewhere. <laughs> yes. Wow, wow. So, Andrea, I've, as you heard from him, is the ops person. If you want to hear from uh, rail for edge or a kind of uh, under a kernel uh, system administrator, this is the person to talk with. And if you have any question, please send it in the chat. Let's and, of course, the... Ansible Automation. <laughs> and, of course, Ansible Automation. Yeah, of course. Oh, uh, as, as we say in Italy, dulcis in fundo, uh, the best at the end. Let's say I'm joking. Now, my name is Natale Vinto. If you see here, I, I put some uh, YAML. Uh, as Andreas would say here, we are all developers, all kind of Kubernetes developer. So here's the YAML to present me. I'm developer advocate here on uh, in Red Dot for OpenShift. You can uh, follow me on Twitter, Natale Vinto. Uh, uh, love football. Um, actually, I didn't push it, this container image yet, but I will do it soon. Uh, you can see on the top right this book that I wrote with another colleague, Marcus Eisele, about how to modernize enterprise Java. And we also mentioned it in the book with Marcus, uh, this project, which is because it's very, very cool. Uh, and I agree with Andres. Yes, those bunch of folks here are basically <laughs> the developers and, and developers, which is cool. So thanks. This is me. I think we can go next. Uh, let's have a now, uh, folks, let's have a uh, YAML person. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <laughs> let's have now uh, an overview, uh, an architectural overview, as we discussed it. So um, uh, if we go to the next slide, I think uh, we can, uh, we can uh, pass, hand it over to Andrea again, because he, he, uh, he can present. What is, Andrea, what is this project about? What are we talking about? Yeah, thanks, Natale. So, um, and, and let's start talking here, because Andreas uh, is, is right. He's the real only ops guy here, even though only few of us develop, develop Java, actually, just, just Matthias and myself. And, and uh, one of the other, the other main contributors, or Jack Newsom, he does. But the others, so uh, Ben, Andreas, uh, also Mario, they are amazing technicians so we started this community because back in the days two years ago i was implementing on my own supported by natal another colleague of mine a, a small poc to play with quarkus at the edge that grown so much that we got the interest of ibm intel and other competitors so instead of having just partners learning how to do this this kind of stuff on at the edge we wanted to build something that could be uh, useful to others, right? Useful to 
customers to people from outside the community because the community is contributed by several people as i said already also yesterday there are some great specialists in the iot uh I, I i can for example mention domenico briganti for example they are specialists in iot and by iot we mean small sensors small devices not all of them can covered by our project but definitely all of them are pluggable in right? and, and 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 this is what we are trying to do we present at the enterprise level what we keep building in the community the only boundary hard boundary in our community is let's try using enterprise products. Mm. So it's still open source, it's still completely open and available and consumable and, and forkable, whatever, but still we want to base our uh, discussion, our, our interaction with other people, with other technical people and also technical business people uh, on, on top of something that is reproducible that can, could be used as a POC or a demo like them as we as we demonstrated yesterday for for something tangible hmm? something that the market could use and so we use um openshift andreas for example mentioned rare for edge so it's not just Fedora iot the upstream version of that but it's it's the the real enterprise version of the operating system at the edge and this is what we try to do based on complex architectures and setup we try to build something that is reproducible. So that means, in turn, we don't do only Ansible, we don't do only Quarkus, we don't do only Red for Edge. We do everything together, making sure that all the products, the third party products compared to, you know, in, in, compared to or in relationship with the Red Hat portfolio and platform, uh, work together to do something that makes sense. And we covered several use cases, we covered generic edge computing use cases we covered manufacturing where we will cover probably something around energy and utilities something that we know the market is trying to understand and work on um, so the more expertise we have also around third-party products the better or the uh, the larger is going to be and more reusable is going to be the the poc we build at the end and we have uh, development cycles mm -hmm. Um, as we are uh, contributors, we are not fully allocated in this. We try to allocate some spare time on, on, on the community. And this is what also makes sense in terms of let's build something if requested, is needed, if needed, and something that makes uh, us having, having fun with, with the technology. And okay, this is not very readable, but that's just to give you an idea of how we think of complex projects. And this is something we built entirely. So we are able to cover SQL, no SQL storage. We are able to cover Rel for Edge, and Andreas will take care of some automation with Ansible, for example. Andreas mentioned also PXC, PXC Boot, which is incredible technology that, of course, takes time to be implemented and tested, and, and <laughs> also also applied to specific use cases or, or projects. And on the data center side, we of course based every base everything on the OpenShift platform, but again. Uh, to roll out applications, to roll out container images, workload, uh, or to uh, set up pipelines. We use technologies that maybe are not worth to be mentioned most of the time, but are, that are very important to um, customers, partners, to everyone who is approaching the, the cloud native world, right? So we used the Tecton pipelines, um, we used Helm charts, um, something that the people you can see here had already knowledge about or that wanted to learn and this is the beauty of this community so thanks a lot i guess we i can hand over back to you natale yes thanks uh, andrea uh, and actually that was really interesting if you can come back uh, two slides back um so i would like to this this, this was very cool uh, because as you see, it's uh, for two reasons. One is the architectural overview, so all the people can see how the, the progress is made. The second, I use it, this image for uh, an upcoming tweet. So I, I would like all the people coming while we're speaking because uh, there are lots of uh, cool stuff we're gonna talk about. The, the, Andrea, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the, um, the innovation today, this year, for this year's edition is the Red Dot for uh, the Rail for Edge. Um, I know we started with Fedora IoT, now we're using Rel4Edge. 
and then we we we, we integrated all the components for edge and also for the open sheet part as you can see here there's the, the edge part the uh, data center plant part where there's lots of uh, um, uh, innovation around messaging uh, queue system in fact andreas if we go to the next slide i think we can go to the to the next step uh not done this one uh, if we go another one we continue the flow Yes, now we talk about running it on the edge. So let's uh, explore this part. Um, and uh, let's end over again to Andreas because uh, he was in charge of uh, building uh, practically this part. And I'm really curious about how, how, how you made it, Andreas. So thanks. Uh, the, the idea that we're having here is, you know, this whole setup is controlling a manufacturing plant and the edge IoT device is the one attached to the machine that actually does the manufacturing and controlling the manufacturing process. Um, so the idea is you will not have full data center capabilities here. You will not set up a satellite and manage and patch the things. You want to have it uh, quickly rolled out. You want to have it easy. You want to have it secure and you want to be flexible. What happens if the IoT device attached to your factory machine dies out? So what we did here to build is we took the Fitlet 2 device, which is an industry standard Intel based uh, device. Uh, you could take other devices. And of course, in the long run, you could also take ARM based devices for that. Um, and to create the operating system, we use the image builder, which is a part of RHEL, but it's also, uh, of course, an, an upstream open source project based on Lorex and Welder um, that you can use to build Fedora or CentOS streams image or whatever. Um, so they are used with the OS3 imaging because that has a couple of advantages. First of all, you have a, a simple, quickly rolled out image. Um, which is immutable. Um, it also mounts uh, the root system read only, which is a small but important fact. Um, because uh, remember, if, if you have a machine which the IoT device is attached to, the manufacturing machine has this big red button. So and if somebody works on the machine, gets in an emergency situation, you don't go and say, well, I'm save you later. Let me shut down cleanly that machine first. That's not going to happen. They just hit the red button, turn it off, and you know what happens to file systems? They're read and write, and you just turn it off without shutdown. And that's why the OS3 image built with read-only root is quite stable on that. So we deploy the image to the edge using Pixie Boot with UEFI. We could do BIOS, but as mentioned in an earlier uh, talk today, it's, it's not secure. It's slower. It uses TFTP and that kind of stuff. And we do Pixie with UEFI. We could also do UEFI HTTPS boot. We just haven't implemented that yet. Uh, but the Pixie UEFI boot that we do could also, since we use the shim um, as, as a bootloader, you could also build that as a UEFI secure boot, boot chain once you configure your own security chain from that. And all you need in the center is a simple web server or on with DNS mask for, for the TFTP where you actually get the image and push it to the edge. On the edge itself, on the device, we just run containers uh, with Podman. And actually, depending on the use case that we're thinking about, you can start these containers through Ansible from a central management system, like, like a, a, an Ansible controller system. Or what you also can do, which is maybe more like the uh, what we're using now and which is more comfortable is you just push the Podman configuration as a system D file. So you create your pods as units. Uh, so they auto start so you can have dependencies and so on and so forth. Uh, why we're using Podman and not something like MicroShift? Um, we see this edge device more like um, with a local configuration, maybe local drivers, maybe you have GPIOs that actually tie into the machine that you control. So you want to have uh, the possibility to run containers and application more closer to the hardware. You want to run local drivers and that kind of stuff. And therefore, MicroShift in this case might not be the optimal setup, but it could be in, in, a, in a different way. Um, so we, we documented and used it with, with RHEL, RHEL for the edge, but it also will work with um, um, enterprise Linux clones and Fedora. Uh, as I mentioned, rootFS is mounted on, on read-only. Um, and I, I just, you know, there's some links in this presentation pointing out to other presentations that were in this conference about 
um, edge and IoT devices that were very, very interesting. Um, and we see some more. Next slide, please, um, on that. So where we want to go from here, or what, what I would like to go from here is, um, we had a lot of stuff about security here. Um, and the, the last talk was about full disk encryption on the edge devices, what happens if the edge device is stolen and, and these things. I actually want to try to push into a different direction because remember you have an edge device with, a, with an unstable SD card and you know how often SD cards break, especially when they're doing read writes for, for more time or run in, let's say, hostile environments like in a manufacturing plant. So I think about a diskless IoT device. So and um, using Pixie Boot not to actually kick in the install process, but actually run the device diskless because it has, you know, it has two network cards. It can do failover and have boot over uh, NFS or root over NFS or root over iSCSI even. So, and if somebody steals the device and rips it off the machine, takes it home, there's nothing on it because it doesn't even have a disk. So that's one of the ideas I want to follow up in the future of the project. And also the possibility, as I mentioned, running microshifts uh, in addition to portman containers or depending on the workload as a um, uh, an alternative to um, to uh, Portman could be both of that. So that's going to be interesting. And also after that very interesting talk yesterday about using NVIDIA devices with Microshift to do AI stuff, you know, like you have an intelligence video surveillance where you put the AI on camera face recognition on, directly on that edge device, like what you can do with a Jetson Nano or Jetson Javier or something like that. Yeah, that and sorry for interrupting you here, Andreas. This is something we are in a discussion uh, yeah. for. So we have this ongoing discussion with NVIDIA. We exactly. want to do something interesting on that. Huh? And, and we want, and I want to use the same basically edge build process that works for the Fitlet, Intel, um, the same for some devices like that and also use the same distribution so that you could have a mixed environment and have your yeah. edge IoT device network with something attached to a machine controlling it, but also having kind of a surveillance device that does the face recognition directly yeah. on it. So that's yeah, basically for, for, for the ops part. Yeah, for the audience also, I wanted to mention that back in the days when we were using Raspberry, Raspberry Pi for the first uh, use case, we actually used direct connection with the GPIO um, for, for the sensors exactly. uh, connected to the to the serial port and using the uh, open source driver from the technology vendor, the sensor vendor, and that worked quite well. <coughs> they were Python based, so we had several containers running at the edge, and one directly connecting to the edge devices to the sorry to the sensors, and and so exposing REST APIs to make the business logic at the edge capable of reading those data of course decorate them and then then uh, send the telemetry to the data center so we, it's plenty of stuff we can do huh, actually exactly yeah. um, and and that's it from my side i don't want to take all your time <laughs> that was a, a very interesting andreas um we, so we've seen the real real edge part no from the operating system uh, we uh, mentioned the micro shift uh, as a uh, possible uh, next step uh, as an innovation on this part. Now let's go in the in the other part. So let, let's talk about a little bit how uh, containers technology, uh, open container technology, uh, enabled and uh, speed up sp speeded up the innovation. For this part, I think now, uh, if we go into the next slide, please, we, we have yes. been talking about it. Thanks, Natalia. So yes, I'm going to just quickly um, tell you about how we've used some of the container technology to, to help um, speed up our development at the edge or for IoT. Um, I'm not going to go into all the technical details. I mean, if you want to, to, to see that, you're welcome to look at the recording for the session we had last night. Um, but in essence, um, by using containers at our, our IoT and edge devices, um, we give a lot of flexibility towards um, developers, right? So um, think about having to manage um, uh, all your dependencies when you want to deploy your, your applications. Um, using containers sort of simplifies that process quite a lot. Like Andrea also mentioned, um, it's also possible that we can 
deploy our applications as a set of multiple different containers for a, for a specific need, right? So you get that uh, isolation when, when I want to deploy something, right? So in essence, that, that allows us to, to ship our applications quicker um, towards our edge devices. Next slide, please, Andrea. So as part of the community, we also um, ran into to some challenges when um, dealing with different, different architectures. Um, like Andrea also mentioned before, in the previous run, we, we dealt with um, ARM devices on our Raspberry, uh, for example. Um, um, and, and in the last Hackfest run, we, we dealt with Intel architectures, right? So um, to help us um, actually d develop and compile our Quarkus applications, uh, the community developed a set of uh, multi-R containers. Essentially, that allows you to, to run containers for different architectures in an emulated way, right? With, with QMU um, embedded inside the container. So we are maintaining a, a set of these um, native builder images um, that allows you to get rid of your, your virtual machines and stuff to actually compile uh, Quarkus uh, natively. Next slide, please, Andrea. Uh, ben, sorry, uh, if I may. Yeah. Um, um, so what you are talking about is quite interesting, and this is, this is something we are trying to achieve now in, in the community. Um, if you think of all the things that these gentlemen are, are talking about, and thinking of sensors somewhere, not maybe, maybe um, attached to the devices, but in, 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 in the network, right? We can, thanks to this, this, this work Ben has done, we can decouple the real sensors, including the physical CPU architecture of the edge devices, and think of the workload in a completely isolated space. Mm -hmm. So if Andreas works on the Pixiebook, right? And Mattia thinks of the security around the data coming from coming through you now the network from the sensors to the data center and several decoration, the business logic working on the data and transferring them or working on some AI analysis can be completely decoupled and could run on Microsoft, could run on Red 4 edge could run on Fedora IoT and whatever kind of um, probably platform or operating system that provides, then correct me, gentlemen, if I'm wrong, a container uh, technology to run the, the, the workload, right? So that, that brings cloud native uh, stuff everywhere, actually. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, um, if you go to the next slide, why, why this is important is that essentially your, your developers working on building these solutions can keep a consistent workflow, right? So if they are familiar with container technologies and use Kubernetes for stuff like your data center um, uh, components or for your, your edge location uh, components, they can keep that consistent workflow, never mind what the, the actual architecture is um, of, for the um, edge devices, right, or the IoT devices. So that's also part of the, the, the extensions that we did to, to essentially allow teams um, to incorporate these builder images that we create um, inside their workflow, right? So in opening up opportunities for them to, to test their applications on Kubernetes, even if it needs to run on a Raspberry, right? Um, if we go to the next slide, so some of the, the, the challenges that we see in the future, though, is that, well, how do we manage devices at scale? Um, since now we, we've, we've sort of tackled some of the, our developer workflows, we've tackled stuff uh, like our packaging um, formats uh, with containers. Um, but if, if we now need to scale this up and start managing hundreds of devices, um, then suddenly the management of that also becomes a bit of a challenge, right? And for that, I'm, I'm also quite excited um, to talk about MicroShift, um, which essentially adds a, a layer um, on top of, of Podman um, to make it appear like a Kubernetes cluster, right? So it's this lightweight layer with a low footprint that allows you to actually 
manage your, your edge devices as any other Kubernetes cluster. Now, what, what makes this important is, or, or useful is that now if you um, couple that to um, your cluster management um, tools, like Rackham, for example, now you can actually start managing your edge devices as just another Kubernetes cluster and actually deal with um, stuff like updating your, your OS on your device, making sure that they all um, on the correct version, right? So it, it simplifies that management of your devices. So I'm quite eager to for our community to actually explore how this can actually um, help simplify uh, the management of these devices. So for more information, um, I think Nat Natalia has also um, added some links in the chat um, if you want to actually uh, explore those, those um, projects yourself. Right. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I put some link in the chat. This is really, really cool and interesting. Uh, we're talking basically here about what is the future of managing a, a multiple ubiquitous uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, endpoint clusters. And if we look at the edge, now we have rel, a rel for a hedge on top of the, the microshift container. So it's kind of a connector that can talk uh, to a Kubernetes controller. And so you can control Kubernetes also at the edge, but having a minimal footprint uh, container base. So that's the evolution around the edge. And um, let me also, since you, you, you mentioned it, let me also mention that uh, open cluster management is uh, the Red Dot effort on open sourcing uh, our advanced cluster manager for Kubernetes, which is a tool to control multi multiple cluster, multiple uh, Kubernetes on multiple cloud. This is fully open source now. Uh, and it can be used to control several workload, uh, data center and moreover edge. So there's lots of excitement around edge development. Uh, and since the, there are many, many pieces uh, that can, many, many computing, computing units, I think, uh, Mattia, maybe probably it makes sense to uh, start talking about security. What do you think about? Yeah, be before Mattia goes, uh, and I have a, an interesting, sorry, <laughs> Mattia, because I, that, it, this is a meetup, right? So I want to uh, push a bit all of you, <laughs> because that, that's going to be, that's an endless discussion, actually. Eh? Right. So we, we, uh, we had the chance to use Fitlet devices, so enterprise-grade stuff. We had the chance to use Jetson, because we have some stuff at home. And we had the chance to use Raspberry Pis, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Uh, because we wanted to have some physical, so hardware restriction to be able to really prove that Workus Native, as we mentioned yesterday, can run with a very small footprint on small devices. But now the, the question is, is it really worth it to use MicroShift and where should I put it? So before, before we were, we connected early to test our setup here. And with Andreas, we had this discussion and this would be, and, and I also encourage Mattia to, to discuss this also during his piece. It's interesting to see why should I put Microchip on an edge device if I'm short on resources? I mean, on a small device, it could be Arduino, Raspberry, whatever. I cannot put Microchip there or is it, it's not worth it. But if you think of, based on the initial architectural review, I have some powerful servers that do AI or ML, whatever. And then I have the devices and the sensors now in the same local area. I could put microchip in somewhere in between hmm? on a edge device, that, but, but, but uh, shipping more physical resources. Hi, huh? and gentlemen, what do you think? Otherwise, microchip is. It depends. It depends. For me, it depends on the architecture and on the kind of application that you have. Think about it because microchip um, also works with the OC CLI, you know, the, the OpenShift command line. And if you have the advanced cluster manager or the open cluster manager, with the, which is the upstream of that, you can also manage your micro shift with your advanced cluster manager. So if the applications that you will use on the edge are quite similar to what you run on the data center and you have a central management for all your Kubernetes, you can also include the edge into the management and then push your applications directly from your dev cluster or from your uh, uh, data center cluster that straight to the edge. But that assumes that you have more, you know, compute and less control inside your application. If you're in an industry application that says, I need to have an application which is closer to the hardware, which actually uses GPIO or these kind of stuff and needs special drivers, then you're better off, I think, with, with 
pure podman. The overheat in the hardware, I don't think is, is a valid point a lot because Microsoft actually uses one CPU, one, one, two, maximum two gigs of memory, which is nothing compared to what you have. Think about it. You know, even Raspberry Pis come with four gig today and eight gig is, is the next step even for the edge devices. That's, that's, that's not a lot. Um, and and uh, which is it's it's absolute commodity. So I think it's more a point of the view how you manage your environments. If it's the edge is completely disconnected and and local isolated network, then you rather go off with you know deploying portman containers from a local registry. And if you include it in the in the big management, you might be better off with Microsoft. So this connection means that it's better to do what Ben was discussing rather than having um, central cluster management, right? So what's, where is the boundary between Ansible management and advanced cluster management? Well, advanced cluster management can co can use Ansible under the hood. So, it's supersetting yeah. it, no? Uh, it can also run Ansible workloads. And uh, yeah, I think uh, to come back to your question, Andrea, it depends on uh, also what Andrea said. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to control those uh, edge endpoints or do you want to consider as a, a far edge where eventually uh, always disconnected and then uh, reporting via batch or kind of? But if you want to controlling them, uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it makes sense to uh, consider them as a Kubernetes cluster or Kubernetes endpoints so you can have a consistency across all your deployments. If you want consistency, standardization across one deployment model, I think you, you can uh, uh, considering using a micro shift in this case. Uh, otherwise, for other more uh, disconnected, uh, less uh, uh, interactive uh, endpoints, probably you can rely on, on just Podman uh, and those kind of workloads. But it's an open question. It's very cool. And if there's some somebody in the chat that would like to uh, contribute to this. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, please send send it over in the chat. We can. It's an open discussion. It's a, a meetup. I know it's a, it's virtual, but it's still open, and uh, we would like to hear from you. Yeah. Um, so in the while, since we're we're talking about multiple cluster, multiple workloads. Uh, hey, Mattia, what about security? Yes, exactly. Always the last piece of the, <laughs> of the puzzle. Yeah, also, if you just to conclude this micro shift, I would say that having a standard solution across different platforms is ideal also for developer, right? And as we're talking about security, I will see this as a next step to create a, a unified service mesh uh, federated with also uh, of the edge, which is really nice. And so wow. you, don't, you don't need to kind of a custom solution to so satisfy the security, but you kind of have a standard way to secure the edge as well. Um, so, because the challenge is you see how you can scale the security about microservices in general on edge device. So think about renewal process, revocation process, or thousand devices that are connected on your platform. So the idea is to have a kind of standard solution, right? And working with uh, um, Kubernetes and, and microservices, the standard de facto provided by the community and is cert manager because cert manager provide an easy tool to manage certificates a standard api to interact with the multiple certificate authority like uh, venify and ashicorp which we use it for our poc on the community and give really uh, the confidence to the developer to work uh, on the security part I help you to speed up the development because you can create a self-signed certificate and when, when you're ready, when your production run, they use the real certificate authority. And as well, in case you work with a, a, a PKI, which is not a standard or non common, you can implement a custom uh, integration because it provides a standard API to you know ex export uh, the certificate from your custom uh, certificate authority. Um, next, please. And of course, when you work in Cloud Native Way, uh, you want to use Quarkus. And Quarkus allow you loves Kubernetes because it provide a native extension based on the fabricate Kubernetes cladding. And so it is make it easy to work with the Kubernetes environment. And why we want to use Quarkus? Let's talk about uh, how to 
a dynamic provisioning certificate in a Kubernetes environment. Um, so we want to, of course, when you work with microservices, we want to kind of recognize um, not just the, the servers, but as well also the client. And this is called like Muta TLS. Muta TLS so is an additional security layer on top of the standard TLS because you want to as well recognize the client who is calling, not just the server. So and in this architecture, we see, we see the integration that we have done so for, for, uh, for this POC around the PK provider with its choose fault and the cert manager component. Um, you need to click. Uh, <laughs> yes. So yeah. No. Now, considering this is a meetup, you all, dear audience, should know shouldn't know that Matthias is expecting me to know exactly when to click on the next slide. I do like this. I do like twenty this. slides with one more line every slide. So it's it's crazy. And I'm okay. But go Matthias. I do. I do may, like may I show them all all of them? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, good. Thank you. You're so kind. <laughs> How many of them? Seven. <laughs> Eight. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Count the numbers. So, uh, in Cert Manager, there is a component called Issuer. Issuer is the, your interface to your PKI provider. So, you when you configure Issuer, you configure the Issuer to tell, please, uh, Vault or PKI, your PKI, give me this certificate and specification based on this uh, domain value, whatever. Um, what's happening is that when you create an issuer, you are, you are able to start creating a certificate type. And then a cert manager is going to watch the certificate uh, based on the information that you give it, like common name, subject alternative names, type of the key, and is going to contact the PKI provider, get the certificate, create a secret for you, and then when you have a secret, your application client server can mount to secret in a classic way, and then they can start doing the client server connection uh, with the Muta TLS capability, and then user can access the, the, the information from, uh, from the client. But how you can, um... next please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, I wanted just to say, Mattia, if I may. Yes. So when we started developing a bit of an history and also of a discussion, when I started developing the, the first use case, that was completely unsecured. Hmm? So I was just creating a self-signed certificate to make the edge, the, 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 so, the workload at the edge in a container connect to the MQTT protocol, uh, protocol exposed by ActiveMQ, no? AMQ uh, uh, on OpenShift. And of course, once Matthias started implementing this piece, I found it quite easy hmm? because the only thing I was supposed to do was to download the certificates and use them for the connection. So we introduced something very important that's very high level actually here. Matthias giving you lots of information that, okay, it's mutual TLS, but we have to, do, to uh, distinguish, to make a distinction between two types of certificates, the bootstrap certificate and the runtime certificate. So the certificates you use to connect to the MQTT endpoint to some telemetries, and the other one is the, the certificate that the each and every edge device, we've been talking about stalling devices or blocking devices or dropping devices because they've been hacked somehow. So those bootstrap certificates are the certificates that the device owns because they are tightly coupled to that hardware ID or stuff. Which is which are again completely different from the the, the runtime certificates. The certificates the device receives to do mutual mutual TLS with um, some other endpoints on on some servers in in the network. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Let me go to the next slide. Yeah, if you go to click at the uh, up to four, <laughs> up to four. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mattia. Uh, you're welcome. So what happens here is that. Um, when this our the latest uh, POC with the Magnum factory, we want to kind of scale out their provisioning of the factory itself, but also all the, the services around and the data center service running factory and services running on the edge. So we because uh, we want to kind of scale out this, we implement uh, um, register services which allow you to which provide an API to register a factory or as well a uh, machinery or, or or a normal service running in the platform. So what happens here? You have a booster uh, part which then Andrea explained before. Um, 
which allow you to connect to the registered services and kind of um, tell them, look, I'm a factory one, I want to register my factory to start working on the, uh, on the data center. So what's happening here, the device and the request to register the service API, and because it has a proper certificate, it is allowed to send those requests. And the registration uh, is going to get the information, it's going to create the certificate resources under the data center in space, and then certain manager take care about the connect to the PKI provider, extract the certificate, create a secret, and then the registration service API is going to watch the secret when it's ready because it's a synchronous communication. So you kind of need to implement this capability. But Quarkus, because with, with the reactive capability, is able to work really in a nice way in a, uh, for the synchronous mechanism. And then uh, when the certificate ready, is going to send those certificate on the factory. And then, and uh, when the, the because we want to kind of scale out, think about uh, the factory can go offline or the center go offline. When the factory is going to register, it's going to uh, request um, a type of intermediate certificate. Why is that? In because we want to kind of give the job to the factory itself to spin up all those certificates for the factory instead to rely to the data center. So, and the data center is going to give an intermediate certificate authority. So the factory can spin up this, the, all the certificate for the device and the services and can work by itself, but there will be, everything will be trusted by the same PK, central PKI certificate authority. Yeah. And this is part of the job we are doing to make sure that we decouple the data center plant from the, the factories, right? So in an enterprise grade, architecture we want to make sure that each and every layer can leave also without the vpn connection that actually could could drop it's it's a matter of practice exactly. and that's what i see in the future hopefully this year with micro shift and the service mesh federation i will mm -hmm. see i would like to drop all those these things leverage still search manager as an entry point and all your PKI provider but all those meshes will be taken by the service mesh itself and you have a really a standard cross platform solution yeah well super uh, cool we had this um extensive no overview on how uh, the community built security and mattia was uh, specifically in charge of uh, this part so how add the security bits to the overall architecture and uh, as mattia was uh, mentioning you know security should uh, should be first no for you have to think about security at the beginning uh but the, you know uh, you start from scratch and then you eventually adapt uh i think this is a really good solution um uh, with cert managers so it's all open source uh, around kubernetes the ecosystem enabled this and uh, in this case there are integration with a vault system also external vault system uh i see mentioned here there's also ashicorp there are many uh but the cool thing is that it's a pluggable secure uh, infrastructure um yeah so folks uh, uh we're going into the end of the session but before closing uh, i have some uh, uh quick reminder a quick uh, appointment to to give you so how do we connect uh, the world to this community Ma mattia also shared in the chat the link to open uh, um, a feature request, a pull request. So the first thing you, you, if you would like to join this community, the first thing you need to do is, is, is going into the Quarks for IoT website, join the GitHub organization. We're going to share again the link in the chat. And the second thing, we would like to talk to you uh, about how we celebrate the winners of this uh, ACFest. Um, last, the, 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 this is the third year. Um, so for the previous two here of the ACFES, we all celebrated on OpenShift TV, which is uh, our um, channel we use to do a show talking about OpenShift and all cloud native architecture here in, at Red Hat. So we uh, have this show uh, available and actually we, we celebrated the, the winners uh, in one of the main show. Uh, inviting uh, those, those, uh, those, those people uh, uh, talking about uh, their experience and in the slide you will have also the recording available uh, you see the li there are the links also to the to the those recording if you would like to hear uh, about the uh, previous uh, uh, editions 
if we go to the uh, next slide, actually, we, we would like to invite you to this year's edition. So we have two appointments. One is the February the 9th. Um, we, we, we will celebrate the Red Hat Hackfest winners on OpenShift TV. If you go to OpenShift TV, you will see the, the full schedule of uh, this uh, uh, series of show we do around OpenShift. On, on February the 9th, we, the OpenShift Coffee Break show will uh, uh, will uh, be really pleased, pleased to have the community and the, and, and the Hackfest winners to talk about how uh, what what was their experience uh, and uh, to uh, to celebrate with them you, in the Hackfest uh, landing page you see the you have the list of the those three winners the the, the winners the, the first the second the third place and there I will not spoiler that if uh, the people that doesn't know yet but we're gonna uh, celebrate with with the winners we're gonna talk about the the Hackfest so it's I think it's really cool. Uh, if you can uh, join us on February the 9th at 10 a.m. Um, uh, Europe, uh, uh, Central Europe time. Um, um, this is uh, very cool. The show will be um, published in both YouTube and Twitch. So if you are a Twitch user, you can see yeah. us also on our... We OpenSheet. stream on both. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, on our uh, Twitch, OpenShift Twitch channel. And the second appointment is the March 9th. Again, uh, it's uh, this is uh, the OpenShift Coffee Break is a uh, now weekly show um, happening on uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Europe time. Um, again, uh, on March it will be another episode uh, where we're going to invite uh, the community. So uh, next episode, February the 9th, we're going to uh, talk about uh, and celebrate the winners. Uh, and then March 9th, we're going to uh, invite and talk about the community like we did today, uh, we like, but uh, with more people from, uh, from the community. community. So those are our... And we will try also, point. Natale, sorry for interrupting you, we will try to give updates on what we are doing. So a lot of the folks here, they have mentioned Microsoft. We started last week investigating Microsoft because we want to make sure that makes sense for the, for the business, but we will give updates on on several additional stuff we are doing. And let me also mention one more thing, what Mattia put in the chat. If you have any idea, any need, any curiosity, if you want to join, if you want us to, if you want to challenge us to do something specific, we will try to do this at our best convenience, of course. Please join us. Please um, open a PR pull request on, our, on one of our uh, repos to propose use cases and challenges. That's what we are looking for. Yeah, that's spirit of the community, right? Please join us. Please uh, uh, join us in the. Uh, Andrea also showed the link of the Quarkus for IoT um, organization on GitHub. Yeah. Uh, please uh, join the organization. Or please join us in the community. Please uh, join us uh, on our next appointment, February the 9th. And I think, folks, that that's all. Uh, that's all, folks. Right? It, it was a very cool discussion, very yeah. deep architectural. I'm really excited about this discussion. And now uh, I'm handing over it to Lu Lu Lucie. And thank you, everyone. Thanks, Radek, for uh, for for um, for your comment in the chat. Thanks, everyone that joined us today. It was really, really a pleasure to be here at DevCon uh, 2022. Thank you, and happy DevCon. Thank you. Man. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for a lovely meetup. It was awesome, uh, guys, like really awesome, uh, energetic, and you covered so much information, but still lightweight. And I'm curious like, how many of attendees will actually meet you on the February 9th or March 9th? Yeah, well, I'm we're the looking peers. forward about it. <laughs> uh, how many will be yeah, looking <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, both attendees and the speakers. Thank you. And, it was a pleasure. Uh, the next session, like the next, yeah. uh, the next meetup will happen at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Central European time. So uh, see you soon, like after lunch. Bye. Bye bye. Thank Next you. Weekend. Ciao. ciao.